so I did a video that raised some questions from my viewers about attenuators. And um, it dawned on me I've really no, never done uh, kind of a construction video of attenuators and why they are the way they are. So I thought I would try that today. Um, so here's a bunch of attenuators. I've got uh, little SMA jobbers. You know, these are good. These are, these are good for maybe a watt. These are good for two watts. Uh, this one's good for five watts because it has little fins on it. Um, these are Chinese versions. These are fancy uh, military type versions. Uh, you can get big ones. This one's good for 30 watts. This one's good for 10 watts. But they're all basically the same inside. So let's talk about what attenuators do and how you might build them. All right, so if I have a voltage and I want to attenuate that voltage, I would use a resistive divider, right? And depending on the ratio of these two resistors, that would give me a lower voltage. I would attenuate the signal. So that's a super simple way to attenuate a signal. So why don't we, why don't we use that? Um, well, one of the problems might be that uh, the impedance in, so the resistance here is different than the resistance here, right? From this side, you only see this resistor, and from this side, you see this resistor. From this side, you might see this resistor in parallel with the uh, you, You'll get some strange impedance, right? So uh, you might say, okay, well, maybe there's a, a different way to do it, and you can do a T. Um, and now, if you think about this one, if these R's are the same, then the impedance this direction and the impedance this direction are both the same, okay? So you might do something like that. Um, but generally what is used is something called a pi, okay? This is a T, and there's something that's shaped like a pi. Um, let's see here, before we get to that, let me give you some type of insight of maybe how something like this works, right? I, I think everybody knows how this works, so let me redraw this and I get this, right? And uh, so this would be, uh, these are the R's, and this is the other, the other R, but you can see, again, that it's just a, a, res a resistive divider, and then we just change the output impedance by adding this resistor. Um, but if you put a voltage here, having this resistor here or not having this resistor here would not change the voltage over here, right? Um, depending on if it's loaded or not. All right, so, so think about redrawing things sometimes. So most of these um, attenuators that, that I have are constructed this way, a pi. And these R's are always the same, okay? These two R's are the same. And uh, there's a bunch of ways of calculating these values depending on what attenuation you want. And, and, and we'll get to that. But let's, draw, let's redraw this one Okay, and it kind of redraws like this. We still have a, res a, this would be R and this would be R. We still have a voltage divider, okay? And so it's still doing some attenuation by that resistive divider. It has a load on the input um, and that may or may not change the voltage on the input, right? But you can think of it maybe as this. So. Um, this particular situation also allows you to have a input impedance the same in both directions. So most attenuators are um, can be used in either direction. There is no input and output because this is symmetric, right? There is there is symmetry symmetry to this thing, and uh, doesn't matter if you put the in to the out, the out to the in. They always work the same. Okay. There are rare cases where attenuators are not symmetric, and I'll show one of those later in the video, but um, most of the time, almost 99% of everything is always reversible, okay? So, okay. So, how do you calculate, how do you calculate these values? Um, these are the values, these are ohms. These are the values for a particular uh, attenuator, and this is for a 6 dB attenuator, okay? And, um, I'll show you here, uh, this is what the equations look like. They are kind of ugly, and I know everybody freaks out when they see math. So don't worry, because there's websites you can just go to and plug the numbers in and it does the math for you, okay? And so um, um, I got these equations and the uh, web 
uh, calculator at, uh, at Pasternak. And um, you can go there and play around and make your own, uh, and figure out what those, uh, what those values might be. All right. Now, um, let's, um, let's think about how these values might work, okay? Remember I redrew one of them and I basically said, ignore this one and just look at this resistor divider, okay? And would that work? Okay, let's, let's give that a try. We have uh, 37.35 and 150.5, okay? and we have plus V coming in at the top, okay? So what is this ratio? Um, well, that doesn't make any sense. Um, if we did the calculation, we would not be attenuating very much and the numbers just wouldn't work out, okay? So we have this other resistor here that we ignored. We're still gonna ignore that, but there's another resistor that we haven't thought about yet, and that is where does this go? Well, this goes off to a device, and the, that device is 50 ohms. You want the output impedance to run into a 50 ohm device, okay? And so if you had this situation, then let's do some calculations. Where's my, where's my calculator? There it is. All right, so here we, have, we would have these two in parallel, okay? We would have uh, 50 and 150.5. Um, if you put these in parallel, okay, it's one over R plus one over R equals one over R, that formula, right? R, R prime, R double prime, whatever. Um, you calculate these parallel, parallel combination you get 37.35, and this calculates to 37.53. <laughs> Think of that. Okay, so it's about half. These two resistors are about the same, and it's about a half. And if you, if you divide the uh, voltage by half, the power goes down by 6 dB. Um, so um, we also have to remember there's another one over here that futzes around with the numbers a little bit. Um, so use the calculator, <laughs> just use the calculator. But um, be aware that it is simple, a simple voltage divider. And the reason that they do what they do and they have it in this weird configuration is to make sure that if you look in this direction and it ends up being 50 ohms. And if you look in this direction, it ends up being 50 ohms, assuming that the other side also has 50 ohms on it. So remember that. Um, if we take, so this is, this is some trouble that, that, uh, that people might get into, okay? They say, oh, uh, attenuators are 50 ohms. They have to have a 50 ohm input and a 50 ohm output, okay? So let's do that. Let's turn on a, uh, uh, let's turn on a ohm meter here. Okay, so we have, we have an ohm meter. So I'm gonna grab this big one here because it's easy to grab. And I will measure the ohms to the center conductor. And we get, hey, look at that, 50 ohms. You see, yeah, that's right. It's because all, all attenuators are 50 ohms, okay? And I'll measure the other side and look at symmetric, it's 50 ohms. Okay, great, grab this one. We're gonna measure it, okay? Uh, let's see here. 50.7, okay, they're all 50 ohms. Okay, great, okay, let me grab another one. Uh, let's see here, let me grab, let me grab one of these down here. Oh, these are 30 dB pads, these are little 3 dB pads, these are divided by, divided by a half. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure the uh, resistance of this guy, and he is 85 ohms. Uh-oh, let me turn him around. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's 50 the other way. I'll turn him around, I'll turn him around. And he is 80, 80, 80, 85 ohms. What's wrong? What's wrong? My understanding of, of attenuators just went out the window. Everything's wrong, everything's wrong. No, it's not. Um, remember that you have to add, I shouldn't have turned off that meter. Let me turn the meter back on. Let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. 
Okay, you remember that I said when you do these calculations, you have sorry, when you do these calculations, you have to remember that you have this extra 50 ohms here, which is the 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 very last thing in the chain is also a 50 ohm thing. And so if we take this here and we put a 50 ohm load on its output, and then looking into this side, we will measure how many ohms we got. And if I can do this by holding everything, and I'll touch that center conductor, and we have 50.3 ohms. Perfect. My 85 ohm uh, attenuator is now 50 ohms. And that's because I added the other side of the uh, equation here. You have to have the, the final output as 50 ohms as well. If you're going to calculate this transmission line stuff, you need to make sure that you're terminated with 50 ohms. Okay, that's what I wanted to get to. All right, so now um, we're building these voltage dividers, but it has a, a constraint of it also has to be 50 ohms. So, it's not just a simple voltage divider, it's a voltage divider plus it has to maintain a 50 ohm transmission line as you go through the device. And that's what makes it very, very complicated. And that's why uh, uh, attenuators are expensive. You say, uh, attenuators are, three, are three, three resistors. They should be dirt cheap. I can get them from China, dirt cheap. They should just be, they should be really, really easy to build. Okay, so let's think about that. Um, here's a picture of maybe what the substrate would look like. You would have one resistor to ground, one resistor through, and then one resistor to ground on the other side. You say, well, that's just it. We get a couple resistors, we pop them on a PC board, and we put connectors on it, and boom, there we go. We, we've made our own attenuator. And maybe that attenuator would work to maybe 100 megahertz, maybe? not too bad, you know, maybe certainly 30, 30 megahertz. It probably would work fine up to 30 megahertz. And you could use that for HF stuff. But as you go higher and higher, then it gets more complex. So um, here's some nicer ones built by some company. I forget who this was. And you can see a little more careful, you know, an alumina substrate PC board, maybe some deposited resistors. So that one's probably going to work maybe up to three, two, two, three gigahertz, you know, maybe. Um, but, you know, the expensive ones that go up to, you know, 12 gigahertz, 26 gigahertz, right? Those are expensive devices. Uh, here's a picture of the, of the, of the uh, substrates that Kyocera designs. And these Kyocera substrates you can see are much, much fancier and a lot more engineering went into them and probably a lot more care and manufacturing goes into them. And that's why they're expensive. Um, so yeah, there you go. Okay, so let's talk about some high powered ones, right? Um, you need to put a heat sink somewhere and you have that little ceramic PC board and you have to like somehow glue that ceramic PC board to some heat sink and get the heat out. And that's not always easy to do, right? Um, maybe a couple watts it's easy, but you know, this one's 30 watts. Um, there's a lot of heat going in here, right? And um, let's think about, you know, where is that heat deposited, right? Um, if this device is it's like this, this is a 30 dB pad. And so it's going to take, um, you know, 1,000 times the energy. Whatever you put into it, it's going to absorb 1,000, uh, you know, 1 1,000th one will come out the other side. That's what I should say. And so it's going to absorb a lot. <laughs> it's going to absorb a lot. So where does it, where's that absorption happen? Well, it happens in these resistors here. Here's a resistor to ground and then here, and then here's a resistor to ground. All right. So let's take a look at those values for, uh, for the 60B pad. So here's our pad and the energy is coming in here and it sees 37 ohms. So certainly a lot of power is going to be dissipated by this 30 some, 37 ohm resistor. And then there's 150 here. So that's not letting much through this side. So most of the power is being dissipated in this one resistor and this other resistor on here, it would do all of the work if the power was coming in this direction. So it depends on if we put the power in this direction, this one gets hot. Put the power in this direction, this one gets hot. 
Um, and the higher up in um, wattage you go, this becomes a real problem because you have kind of a, a weak link, okay? So some fancy attenuators are actually multi-stage attenuators. And they are designed specifically with an in and an out. You can only use them in one direction. And so here's a, here's a picture of why that might be true. Um, you can see in this one, it's a very high powered attenuator and it's multi-stage. And you can see that the, the uh, RF goes from left to right and the left resistors are big heavy duty ones. And then as you go farther and farther and farther, you know, the first one may drop it by a half and the next one drops it by a half and the next one drops it by a half and the next one may drop it by a hundred. Multi-stage design, um, they, they only work in one direction. All right, there you go. A little bit of the insight on um, attenuators, um, how they're constructed, how the design, how the resistors are used, why a particular um, attenuator might not measure 50 ohms. Um, and uh, yeah, hope, hope it helps.